Amen. But thank God, Doug, he's coming a time uh, that it's going to get better. Uh, amen. We may have troubles and trials down here. Amen. But there's a time coming that it's going to get better. Amen. There's a heaven, amen, I believe waiting on us. I don't believe that, amen, that Jesus died in vain today. I don't believe that God sent his son down here to die in vain. Uh, amen, that we would just go ahead and live some miserable life. Uh, amen, and and die and go to hell. Uh, amen. Or face the wrath of God. Uh, amen. Thank God I thought about sitting over our daddy. Uh, amen. That verse began to get on my heart. Uh, uh, Jesus said, let not your heart. Uh, amen. Be troubled. Uh, amen. Thank God people's hearts. Uh, amen. They're troubled today. Uh, amen. My heart gets troubled. Uh, amen. Maybe your heart gets troubled. Uh, uh, but Jesus said, let not your heart. Uh, amen. Be troubled. Uh, I believe he also said, neither let it be afraid. Uh, amen. But men's hearts, uh, amen, and women's hearts are failing them today. Uh, amen. They're troubled. Uh, amen. They're carrying a heavy load. Uh, amen. They don't know which way to turn. Uh, amen. You got to turn to God uh, and let go of the world. Uh, amen. We got to turn loose. Uh, amen. The cares of life. Uh, I'm talking about the devil. Uh, amen. Holding you down. Uh, I'm not talking about money. Uh, I'm not talking about your job or your family. Uh, I'm talking about the devil. Uh, amen. Keep pulling you down. Uh, lying to you. Uh, uh, telling you it ain't going to get no better. Uh, amen. The doctor maybe told you you're sick. Uh, and the devil will tell you you're going to die. Uh, uh, Jesus said, let not your heart. Uh, amen. Be troubled. Uh, I'm glad today if I die. Amen. That's not the end of this life. Amen. I still got somewhere. Amen. To go. Amen. I believe heaven. Amen's a waiting dug. I don't believe this whole life's the end of it. I believe heaven. Amen's still gonna be there. If I leave here today. Amen. In a car wreck or a sickness or whatever it be. Amen. I'm not gonna live. Amen. The rest of my life in fear of this life. I'm going to live looking on Amen to Jesus Like you said the author And the finisher of our faith Amen Jesus Amen He begun the good work in us Amen we just got to hold on Amen till we get to the end Amen 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 not going to get ahead of nobody Amen but I'll tell you something I'm glad that my heart don't have to be troubled it don't have to be worried down and beat down. <laughs> amen. There's a lot of people. Uh, amen. Is sick today. Uh, amen. No doubt about feeling. Hey man, I get sick, Doug. I don't feel so good all the time, but I've been blessed. Hey man, I feel blessed today. Hey man, I feel good today. Hey man, Doug, I feel good. Amen. Amen. Maybe you preachers come on preach. I feel good in the Lord. I don't feel good. Hey man, in myself, but I feel good, Tammy. Hey man, in the Lord. I feel Feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank God come today. Amen. And I like to feel. Amen. That comforter. Come by and comfort. When the world. It looks like a raging storm. And it's blowing all around. Amen. And there's no help. Look like you've lost hold. Amen. And you're drifting here and there. Amen. But somewhere out of the dark. A cloudy storm. I can just see a hand at it. Uh, coming out, uh, amen, to reach down, uh, amen, saying I'm an anchor, uh, uh, take hold right here, uh, amen, let the storm blow, uh, amen, I got you, uh, I've got a hold of you, uh, and I'll hold you, uh, amen, when the storm's over, uh, I'll still be here, uh, amen, when the storm's over, uh, amen, and the storms of life blow, let not your heart be troubled. Jesus is real. Do you believe Jesus is real? Amen. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Let not your heart fear and fall and fail you. Amen. Amen. The doctor may give you some bad week. 
lawyer may give you bad news this week. Amen. Your job may give you bad news this week. You may have woke up this morning with some kind of sickness that you didn't have yesterday. Amen. You might have woke up this morning. Amen. The devil will tell you. Amen. You might as well quit. Amen. You might as well stop. Amen. You might as well give up. But I'm here to tell you, let not your heart, amen, be troubled today. Amen. God, amen's got you. You just got to hold on to God. Like Daddy said earlier, amen, they that endure the end, amen, the same will be saved. Amen. It takes something, amen, to be strong in the Lord. Amen. I thought about that little woman in the Bible. Amen. When Elisha went down there, dug, and her son had fell sick, amen, and died, amen, and I thought about, amen, how he sent Gehazi out there, and he went out there, amen, and that little woman, amen's child, amen, it died, amen, thank God that she went to meet the man of the Lord, amen, thank God he said, is it well, amen, with thee, is it well with your family, amen, she said, it is well, amen, though she knowed her son, amen, was dead, amen, amen, do you know what, amen, though you and I die, amen, it can still, whoa, hallelujah, be well, amen, with our soul, it can still, amen, be well, amen, this ain't the last thing, this is just a chapter, amen, going to heaven, amen, heaven is going to be there if we die or if we don't. If we live, we are the Lord's. If we die, we are the Lord's. Paul said, whether then we live or we die, uh, we are the Lord's. <laughs> Amen. Are you the Lord's today? <laughs> Amen. Does the Lord know you? <laughs> if you know the Lord <laughs> and the Lord knows you, <laughs> then let not your heart be troubled because you've got a better place. Daddy said it earlier, more enduring substance. If this house or this tabernacle were dissolved, we've got a, hand, a home made in heaven, not made with hands. It's going to be there. It's going to be there. I'm glad it's a foundation like the Word of God. And it's sure. Amen. Amen. Men's hearts are failing them. Our hearts, if we ain't careful, we'll let the devil pull us down uh, and get right down in the same boat uh, with the lost people uh, that have no hope in this present world. Uh, amen. They've got hope uh, if they'll turn to Jesus. Uh, but if they die in the shape they're in, uh, they got no hope. Uh, amen. And I don't want to be in that boat. Uh, amen. I don't want to be in that shape. Uh, amen. I'm glad I know uh, that my Redeemer, uh, amen, he lives. Uh, amen. He's sitting, uh, amen, on the right hand. Amen. Of the throne of God. Amen. I'm making intercession. Amen. When I make mistakes. And not only that, but he's there when I'm down. Yes. Amen. Doug was talking about last night quoting the Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. When you're a child of God, you got a home in heaven. Amen. This thing down here, the, the devil will cloud your eyes with the troubles and the cares of this life, uh, and it'll try to choke you out. Uh, everything that's bad, uh, he'll put it under a magnifying glass. Uh, amen. You may have something on your body. Uh, he'll tell you it's 20 times worse than it is. Uh, amen. You may have a financial bill. Uh, he'll tell you it's 30 times harder to get. Uh, amen. I know it's hard, uh, and we struggle sometimes. Uh, amen. But hold your head up. Uh, amen the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. His arm's not short. Amen. His hand, it's not wax weak. Amen. He's still strong. Amen. He's still mighty. I'm preaching about God. Amen. He's in control. Amen. Are you and I today? I'm glad. Amen. In his presence is joy. Amen. In his presence you'll find joy. Amen. Amen. You get down and you start praying to God and you get a hold of God, you'll find joy. You'll find peace. You'll find happiness. And you'll find a joy unspeakable and full of glory. And you'll feel something that this world can't give you. 
You'll feel something that a loan from the bank can't give you. You'll feel something that unemployment can't give you. Uh, amen. You'll feel something that working can't give you. Uh, uh, you'll feel something a fishing trip can't give you. Uh, amen. You'll feel something a winning of a basketball game can't give you. Uh, amen. You'll find something uh, that a party can't give you. Uh, amen. You'll find something uh, uh, that lasts. Amen. Uh, uh, the Bible says, uh, amen, the pleasure of sin. Uh, amen. They only last for a season. Uh, amen. There's none of those things uh, uh, that I'm talking about all sin. Uh, amen. But I'm telling you what, uh, uh, the joy of the Lord uh, is worth more than all of them. Uh, amen. The feel the joy, uh, amen, of the Lord today uh, is worth more uh, than anything you can ever get a hold of. Uh, amen. To feel the presence, uh, amen, of the Lord in your soul. Fill you with a joy that this world can't know. The only way you'll feel that joy is if you bow your head down and you give your heart to the Lord. And when he comes in, he'll bring something that you can't get nowhere else. Money can't buy it. Tammy, there ain't enough money in this world in Fort Knox or nowhere else. Hey, man, thank God you can't drink enough alcohol, take enough pills, shoot up enough needle, snort enough lines to get what I feel in my soul today. That don't make me exempt from trials and troubles. Don't make me exempt from sickness. But it makes me a home in heaven. When this life is over, I've got a promise. Amen. No matter what happens in this life, I've got a promise. It's laid up for me. It's already laid up for me. It's already paid for. It's already there. I, I don't got to wonder if I can finish paying for it. I, I don't got to wonder, do I got 12 more payments? I, I'm almost there. I, I, the bank might come take it from me. I, I, but praise God, it's already I, I laid up for me. I, amen. Thank God tonight. I, amen. A treasure in heaven I, I, where no man I, amen, can go and steal it. I, amen. Nobody can unwrite it. I, I, no man can take it from me. Me. Amen. If I die, to die is gain, the Bible said. Paul said to live is Christ and to die is gain. In other words, if I die, I'm even better off than I am now. If I die, I'm far better with a far more enduring substance. Amen. In heaven, amen. We need to get around the big picture. Amen. Sometimes the devil likes to show you, Doug, the little picture. Amen. This is going on. That's going on. This is wrong. That's wrong. You don't feel so good. Amen. You know what? You can go right into heaven. Amen. Dying with cancer. You can go right into heaven. Dying with a heart attack. You can go right into heaven with a stroke, but you can't go into heaven if you ain't been born again. I don't care how healthy you are. I don't care what big leader you are. I don't care if you're the biggest person on your block. Amen. The biggest member in your workplace. If you ain't got God, you are lost. You got no joy. You might say, I feel good. Well, let me ask you, you feel good in the flesh, and your flesh is going to die, and then what do you got left? Let not your heart be troubled. You know why my heart's not troubled today? I got no control over what happens tomorrow. I may have the biggest trial ever hit me tomorrow I'll ever been, but my heart don't got to be troubled because I still got Jesus. I've still got God in my life. The world can't take that away. They can't steal your joy. We get down sometimes, and I get down, and I'm not a beating on nobody for getting down, but I'm here to lift you up and say, look up. God tells me to tell you, let not your heart be troubled. Somebody's heart's a little troubled today, no doubt, or he wouldn't have told me to tell the people, let not your heart be troubled today. <laughs> Amen, it's going to be all right. <laughs> Amen, because God's still on the throne today. <laughs> if I looked around, <laughs> Amen, and I see all the wars, <laughs> and I see all the laws <laughs> being passed against God's people, <laughs> and I see all the abortionists, <laughs> and all the laws, <laughs> and these other laws, <laughs> 
amen, to back us into a corner. And my heart could get a trouble. Amen. It could get afraid. Amen. But Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. He said, there's going to be wars. There's going to be rumors of wars. There's going to be earthquakes. There's going to be pestilences. There's going to be diseases. Amen. All these things. Amen. Thank God before the end comes. But let not your heart be troubled. Because he still loves you. When he went away, Doug, he didn't just go away and forgot us and left us. He said, I go away and prepare a place for you. And if I go away and prepare a place for you, I'll come again. And what he said next was, I'll receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. He's going to prepare a great place. Hey man, thank God today I'm not I'm not preaching one way or the other to nobody that what they should or shouldn't do, but if you got God and you know you got God, you should be have some peace. Right. And if the devil has stole your peace, you need to rebuke the devil. Right. No the Bible said, resist the devil and he yeah. flee from you. Yeah. Hey Amen. You gotta pray, you gotta believe. When the storm's so dark you can't see through it with a natural eye, you got to believe. You just got to trust him. I love that song, The Anchor Holds. Hey, man, it holds in the storm, amen. Jesus is an anchor to the soul, and he'll hold right to your hand when you can't hold to his and you can't even lift up your hands. The Bible said we're to lift up the hands and hang down. Uh, amen. And the feeble knees. Uh, uh, sometimes God needs a Christian person. Uh, amen. To see their brother or sister. Uh, uh, Doug and lift up their hands. Uh, amen. You see somebody all drunk over. Uh, uh, sometimes you might as well just go up and pick their hands up uh, and say, look up. Uh, uh, your redemption draw now. Uh, uh, amen. You're going home one day. Uh, uh, you don't need to look down. Uh, amen. You need to be like Moses. Uh, and when the Bible was hot. Huh? Amen. And they stayed his arms up huh? and they held their hands up. Huh? Amen. And Moses stood there. Huh? Amen. With his arms up huh? and the children of Israel won the battle. And when he let his arms down, they lost the battle. Need to lift your head up, not in pride. Say, well, I'm a Christian, I'm better than you, or I'm a this and I'm better than you, but you ought to be able to lift your head up and say, I'm going to heaven, devil. You're not lifting your head up against your brother or against your sister, but you're lifting your head up against Satan who wants you to look down. He wants you to look down and keep tripping and falling and not look up at what you got to gain. You got way more to gain than you got to lose. Some people don't believe that. Well, I got so much to lose. Well, Jesus said, lay aside every weight and every sin. In other words, just cast it all off and look toward the cross. Look toward the cross and let not your heart be troubled. Jesus was about to go away. I'll get out of the way when these preachers come on and preach. Jesus was about to go away. And he noted his disciples, they loved him. They loved him, Daddy. I believe they loved him. We know that one of them betrayed him. We know they forsook him. All forsook him. They all forsook him, not just Peter, but they all forsook him. But Peter said he wouldn't. That's why he stood out. But they all forsook the Lord. But he knew they loved him. And he knew he was going to be leaving them. But he said, I won't leave you comfortless. I'm not going to leave you alone. He's never left us alone. Doug Dad preaches all the time, he'll never leave you. He said, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of this world. Even to the end of the world. Well, I don't think we'll even make it maybe to the end of the world. We may die first, and then again we may be standing here. But one way or the other, Jesus is going to be with us. He's walking and talking and leading and guiding and shining the light that we know where to go. And his word is that light. But Jesus was going away. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. And I could go right on down that verse. Have you heard it many times? But he was going away. 
and his disciples' hearts, no doubt, was heavy. And you know what? We've not seen him with our natural eye. And sometimes our hearts get heavy. And sometimes, you might, I'd say you've been there, I know I have. Sometimes I've just been in the valley so low, Tammy, I just long to go home. I said, Lord, just if you want to just take me on home, I don't want to be selfish, but you just come on and take me on home. Because I know it'll be greater over there than it could ever be over here. But you know what? Paul, I think, felt the same way at times. But he said, to abide is more needful for you, for me to abide here, for me to live here. Sometimes it's more needful for me or you to be a light to somebody else or to preach to somebody else or to encourage somebody else. Hey, Amen. Thank God. But let not your heart be troubled this morning. Jesus is still in control. They've not passed the law yet that could take him off the throne, Doug. They've not got one big red, blue, yellow, orange law, big print, small print, large print that was big enough to pass through the House, through the Senate, through the United Nations, through anywhere else that was big enough to get him, amen, off the throne of God. And they ain't never going to get him, amen, off the throne of God. Amen. He's ever sat there, amen, at his Father's side, and he's going to make intercession for you and I. He's going to comfort you and I. The Bible called him a God of all comfort. Amen. He's a God of all comfort today. Amen. If your heart's troubled, look up to God and believe what God said. If you'll believe him, you'll see him come fix your things and, and help you. I ain't saying he just takes everything away and, and you never have another storm. And if you're a Christian, this shouldn't happen to you or that shouldn't happen to you. Uh, uh, the Bible said all that live godly uh, in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Uh, amen. Thank God I believe you're going to have troubles in this life. Uh, uh, but Jesus said he's overcome this world. Be of good cheer. Be happy. Don't let your heart drag you down. Let your heart be merry. Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to the Lord. You know why a lot of people can't get in a good, good uh, a spirit way with the Lord? I'll tell you one reason. Their hearts are heavy and they're burdened down with this world. And, and it's hard. It's hard sometimes. You gotta. I thought about it as I was coming out to the end of Patterson Road, Doug. As I come down the road while I go to make that left, I begin to think about them three mighty men, Daddy, in the Bible that broke through down there to get to the water for David. David said, oh, hey, I'd like to have a drink from down there. And, and they just broke through the garrison. They just broke right through the middle of the Philistines, and they went and got him some water and brought it to him and said, here you go. And I begin to think about that. It had nothing to do with what got on my mind over here, but I begin to think about Why'd they do that? They had a desire. Yep. They had a desire, and they wasn't afraid. Yep. They had no fear. They said, oh, we're going. If Jesus wants you to do something, serve him, live for him. Well, you say, I'm going. Jesus wants it. Yep. Jesus needs it. Jesus asked me to do it, then I'm going to do it. Yep. David didn't even ask them to do it. But they loved him that much to go do it because they loved him that much. They loved David that much that they put their lives on the line. And David, David poured it out because they said, oh, they, they risked their blood for me. How shall I drink this? And he poured it out on the ground. But they loved David. And they put their life on the line for David. And being a Christian, amen, sometimes we got to love the Lord enough, amen, and when we see a, a garrison of Philistines or whatever it might be, and God says, go talk to that one, or God says, go sing that song, or God says, prophesy, or God says, lift your hands and praise me, we got to break through all that and say we love him, amen, we're going to lift our hands, we're going to praise him, we're going to break through. Uh, and when you break through, uh, amen, you'll get a drink of living water, uh, amen, that'll satisfy you, uh, amen, from the inside out, uh, amen, and you won't be thirsty uh, uh, for the things of the world, uh, uh, but you'll have God, uh, and you'll be fulfilled inside. Sometimes you got to break through. You got to break through. The devil set you a barrier. He set me a barrier. And he said, look how hard that is. You can't do it. 
You can't do that. Look what the doctor told you. Look how big that bill is. Look at that job. You can't have that job. There's 20,000 other applications out there. Let me tell you something. God can pull yours off the bottom and stick it on the top. The devil likes to make you doubt. And as long as he can make you doubt, you won't have what you wanted from God. God's God. I've seen God do it. That's how I know. I've seen God do things for me and for other people, and I know it. It ain't just about working or jobs, but that's a big part of our life. And sometimes on the job, you might be working with somebody, and you say, I can't stand this no more. They're killing me. I'm a Christian, and all they want to do is cuss, rare, and rant, and rave. I've been there, and you got to work with them, and, and you got to love them. I've had to be in the same truck with them, Doug, and they've teamed me up with them, send me off into Alabama and Georgia and Florida and places. I asked the Lord, help me get through this. And, and as I got older and I started learning more, I was a young Christian. I learned God put me in that truck with them for a reason. Yeah. How else could they learn if they had never with nobody that was with the same people like they was? And I began to learn. Talk to them, reason with them. If they don't like it or don't agree with it, whatever, somewhere down the road, God will put somebody else in their pathway. And hopefully they'll open their eyes. It wasn't necessarily to try me. It was to help somebody else. You know, sometimes we look down and we're needing help and we're asking for help. I believe sometimes if we just forget about what our problem is and help somebody else, God will come by and take care of our need. Sometimes we got to look at somebody else's need and say, what can I do to help them, Lord? Help me help their heart not be troubled. Help me to lift up their spirits, Lord. I know you got me. I know you got me. Let me help somebody else. And sometimes you just ain't got enough strength to get out of the bed or you ain't got enough strength to go help somebody and God will send somebody to help you. When Jesus was fasted and he was wearied and the devil come to him in his weakest time. When Jesus had fasted 40 days and nights and he had come down, Doug, and the devil, the Bible said the tempter came to him trying to tempt him. He was hungered. So he's afterward, he's hungered. Forty days and nights, you're going to be hungry. He said, if you be the son of God, command these stones that they be made bread. You know how good a big old piece of bread probably sounded right then? Probably sounded really good. But Jesus didn't go for that. He was weak in the flesh, but let me tell you something. He wasn't weak in the spirit. And people say, well, how can you say he's weak in the flesh? He's Jesus because he's tempted in all points like we are. And I'd been hungry right there. I'd have been hungry, so I know he was hungry. He was hungry, but we had fasted, so he was strong in the spirit. The Lord gave him strength. you got to have strength in the Lord. When the flesh is weak, you still got to try to read and pray. Don't get discouraged over every little thing. Try to let, it's hard. It's easy for me to go up and say, don't be discouraged over You say, well, everything's going good for you. It's easy to say, and it is. It's easy when you're up on the mountain. But I've had to get down and read and pray when I was in the valley too. And I failed God. God knows it, and I'm not dragging it up. Devil loves that. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm here today. And the race ain't running in one day. We got to finish the race. Paul said he had finished his course. He had finished it. No doubt along the way he made mistakes and he seen things he wasn't real happy with in his life. And he wrote about some of them. But when he got on the road for God and he had problems, he didn't have just a road of ease. I know it's a common thought of a lot of preachers today that if you're not got everything and your bank account ain't always full, then there's just something ain't just ain't right about you with God. And that's totally opposite. I'm not going to dig into the thing or do no name calling, but you're going to struggle as a Christian sometimes. Or Jesus wouldn't have said, let not your heart be troubled. He'd said, you're going to be up on the mountain all the time. Why should I tell you that for? You're going to be up on that mountain looking down and around, but you ain't always going to be there on that mountain. Some days you're going to be the one that's in the valley. We all seem like we walk through life, and one day we might be up, one day we might be down. And it's like Doug said a while ago, my faith, it don't stand on if I'm in a valley or if I'm on a mountain. I'm still saved. When I wake up in the morning, I'm still saved through faith. I got faith in Jesus that I'm still saved. 
And if I walk through the valley that day, that don't make me lost. And then when I get to the top, I'm saved again. I fall back down into lost and saved again. The Bible don't teach that. You just keep your faith in Jesus. And when the storms are blowing, when the storm was beating on the houses of Peter and all those other writers in the Bible and disciples, they weren't lost and found. They were saved. He saved some wicked people. Peter said, depart from me, Lord. <clears throat> I'm a sinful man. You might say, I'm a sinful person. You might say, I got enough pride, or, or you won't tell nobody you got so much pride, but you know you do. You know you got so much pride that you're not coming down to no altar in front of no church people. Your family will look at you in life, but you would say, you know what? We thought you was a big, tough, rough, tough kind of character, and, and now look at you down in that altar. You better swallow that pride and say, I just need Jesus. And that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing when you can put away all your pride. And then all them people, Doug, it would do that to you. or say, You come back and put your arm around them and say, I'm saved. You need to go with me. And we'll go all together now. You need to be saved. I remember when, when you read about Paul, when Paul got saved, then he went out and started preaching to everybody else. And they ridiculed him, so don't think you'll be any different. They, they stoned him. They whipped him. I think I could take a little tongue lashing. I could take a little bit of somebody talking about me or laughing at me. They mocked Jesus. They smote him. They blindfolded him. They smote him through the face. They plucked the hair off his cheeks, Isaiah said. Amen. They spit upon him, and they said, Prophesy to us who it is that smote thee. I think today we got a lot of people that's afraid of what somebody else is going to say about them. And I know you might, a lot of people might think, well, that ain't much. We can just over. That's a big pull on people. A lot of people, they'll say, well, <clears throat> everybody, your eyes closed and your head's bowed. It's all right. If that's what you do, it's fine. But I believe if you really get a hold of it just right, you ain't caring. <clears throat> you said, I'm not going to hell. I'll take Jesus right here in front of everybody. I'll take Jesus right here in front of everybody. <clears> hey, <throat> some people that's a little backward, they'll say, I'm a little backward. I'm a little shy. It does take time sometimes to come out of that. But if you'll just make that step to come out to an altar, or if you just make that step to get down on your knees, or if you just make that step to bow your head and say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner, and forgive me of my sins, and acknowledge that you're a sin, you're a sinner against God. It don't matter how many sins you or I sinned against somebody else. When we're a sinner, we sinned against God. And we must ask God to forgive us of our sins, all sins against him and all others, and he'll do that. I believe he'll do that today. I believe he'll bring a peace in your heart and let you know that you've been forgiven. Well, hallelujah. I believe you can feel something come down on you when you'll just acknowledge and just take all that pride and say, God, I, I am that sinner. I am this wicked person. I am just a sinful person. Lord, just forgive me, please, and be merciful to me. I believe he'll forgive. He won't, he won't persecute you. Brother John preached last night, Doug. He won't laugh at you. He won't laugh at you in the church when you come down, Daddy, to pray. Ain't nobody going to laugh at you. Ain't nobody going to poke fingers at you because we've everyone been there if we've been saved. We need to consider ourselves, as the Bible said, considering ourselves, lest we also be tempted. We need to consider ourselves. Maybe these preachers come on and preach, but I tell somebody today, Doug, they need to find a place and make peace with God. Bow your head and make peace with God. I believe when you find that peace with God, you can get to that place, Tammy, where your heart won't always be troubled. It'll always doubts and fears come. The devil's going to throw them. It's not, don't mean you ain't saved because cause you have doubts and fears come your way or because the devil talks to you, but you need to resist the devil. Resist the devil, and he'd flee from you. The Bible said, draw nigh unto God, and he'd draw nigh unto you. When you get those doubts and fears, you rebuke the devil, and you pick up your Bible, and you read something good about what God did or Jesus did. You open your Bible up somewhere, and you read about Jesus and the good things he is and how he's going to do things or, or the home he's made you in heaven. Amen. The devil can't stand that. He wants you to just bow your head and throw your hands in the air and say, well, you know what? It's so bad today. I can't get my mind on church. I'm not going. You know how I many people this morning probably said that? 
said, I got this so-and-so going on or that's going on. I can't get my mind on church. I'm just going to stay home today. You just come on to church. I'm not going to jump on you because you don't feel good. I'm not going to jump on you because you ain't shouting through the aisle. We're not going to jump on you. We'll pray for you. If you come to church, you say, I'm so down right now. Would you all pray for me? I don't know a person in this building that won't say, well, come on up here. We'll pray for you. We don't want you to feel that way. We want you to feel released and feel happy. And you may go home and say, well, I'm still going to have that problem or this problem. Well, you may have, but you've got a home eternal in heaven. Let not your heart be troubled today. Your heart will get troubled. And if you ain't careful, you'll stress yourself out so bad over so much trouble, you'll cause a sickness problem. If you worry yourself, as they say, worry yourself to death, that's probably could actually happen if you do it enough. But Jesus said, don't be worried about these things. Don't be worried so much about them. You got a home in heaven, and guess what? You got a life. I like to just make this point. I, I hope you brothers preach. I, I, we've got a life. This body's going to die, whether it dies of cancer, whether it dies out here on a car wreck, whether it dies of a blood clot or, 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 or a chopped off leg on a, you know, on a job or arm and we, something happens to us. I don't want to be gruesome, but I mean, you're going to die of something somewhere. If you get to be 105, 6, 8, 20 years old and your heart just stops, you're going to die. But, Brother Kenny, we got another body, and it ain't going to die. We got another body been promised to us from God, and it won't die, praise the Lord. It's going to be eternal in heaven. It's going to feel. It's going to walk. They're going to have eyes. Doug won't need no more of these right here no more. They won't be able to tell me when I went over for LASIK, uh, you're not a candidate. You know what? I don't need to be no candidate. Uh, amen. Because I'm going to be like a lot of people uh, uh, that don't have to have them. Uh, amen. And thank God for my glasses. Uh, uh, they help me to see. Uh, uh, but they come in a day. Uh, amen. Thank God if we just hold on. Uh, amen. If you're in a wheelchair, uh, I've seen a little man out there in a wheelchair a while ago as I drove by and I thought about you know what if he makes it to heaven amen he won't have to worry about no wheelchair Doug he's sitting out there amen by himself amen I thought about when you got ailments sometimes you're by yourself you just can't do what everybody else does you just can't go where everybody else goes but if you got Jesus and you make it to heaven Heaven. Amen. You'll walk and you'll talk and you'll be just like everybody else. Amen. Sickness. Amen. I'll be in the past. There's no more dying. There's no more tears. Amen. The Bible said the former things. Amen. They passed away. Amen. It's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. Where dwelleth righteousness. Amen. The former things. They're going to pass away. Ain't no more sickness. There won't be no hospitals. There won't be, amen, no insurance companies. There won't be no drug stores. There won't be no doctors. Amen, I love doctors. They help people. Amen, but let me tell you something. There won't be no overpriced medication. They won't be a poor person so well, I just can't afford it. There won't be no retirements in heaven. Thinking I'd like to retire when I'm at my age, but I can't. When we get to heaven, it's going to be worth it. I'm trying to encourage somebody today. I hope I do. Let not your heart be troubled. We got a better, a far more enduring substance. I think Dad got it started a while ago. Maybe he could have went ahead and preached about it. Far more enduring substance in heaven. Far more enduring substance. You want to preach? Come on, preach. Preach a while. Come on, Doug, preach. I was get right here and preach. I know you had something on your mind. You got up here all stirred up. Come on, preach about a far more endearing. We got something more endearing. We got a, it's going to last, Doug. It ain't like building a house out here. In about 20 years, you got to re-roof the top. Uh, about 20 years, you got to check the foundation. Uh, amen. Maybe the walls are starting to crack because it's settled. Uh, amen. We're going to a place. Uh, amen. Thank God that eyes not seen, Tammy. Uh, amen. Ear ain't heard. Uh, uh, neither is it entered into the heart of man. Uh, Amen. That makes me happy today uh, and that I know there's a place of coming. Uh, amen. Thank God you don't got to cry for me. Uh, amen. If I leave here today, uh, amen. Thank God uh, I believe today. I believe it. I believe it. Do you believe there's a home in heaven and you need to believe today? 
It's a home in heaven. Don't forget it. Don't forget why you got on this road 30 years ago. Don't forget why you started 20 years ago. Don't forget why you're on the road. There is a reward for them that are saved. If you're on the road for God, you hold on. You're closer now. If you started last week, you're closer now. Don't let go of your reward. Don't turn around and look back. Don't be beat down by the devil. That's easy to be said. I know it's easy to say it. But the Lord wants you to know he's still with you. You started 30 years ago. He ain't away from you. He's as close to you now as he was the day you went there. If, if you're not as close, it's because you ain't as close. He wants to walk right with you. He wants to talk right with you. He wants to walk and encourage you and, and, and talk to you. And sometimes we let the devil do more talking and we block God out. We need to block the devil out and let God start talking. Amen. Sometimes it's easier to believe the things we see. I can see a big $400 electric bill, or I can see a big $5,000 uh, hospital bill, or I can see my car broke down in the driveway wondering how am I going to get it fixed. These are things that happen to all kinds of people. I can see when I get up in the morning I'm so sick I can't hold my head up. I can see when I come to church and there's only a handful. I can see when I get up to go to church and the devil's gnawing at me, you failed last week, you should stay home. No, that's when you need to go. When you fail, though, we should go more. We should go get right with God and get back up and say, God, I did all I can. All I can do is get up and, and start the race. If you're running the race and you're running, you know what? The faster you run, the harder you fall and trip down. I was running when I failed before. I was preaching and I was running, and I thought I was running fast. But when I fail, I fail and I took a lot of rolls. And when you fall and you take a few rolls, you got to beat yourself off and it hurts a little bit. It hurts quite a bit. But you know what? You ain't at the finish line yet. If you stay right there, you never cross the finish line. You don't get the prize. Got to get up, dust yourself off, and look up. Look up because there's some help somewhere if you look up. If you look up, there's some help. God's up. David said, I look to the hills. Whence come my help? My help come from God, he said. His help come from God. Where's God at? God's up here. He's down here and everywhere, but he's up here. He says to look up. The Bible says to look up. If you'll look up and you'll ask, and sometimes when we fall, we need to look down. We need to bow our head low, and we need to say, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Father, in the name of Jesus. And be, be sincere in our hearts. And if we hurt somebody, Tammy, or somebody hurts us, we can't make them love us, Doug, but we can say, Lord, forgive them. I do. Lord, I forgive them. Forgive them and, and help them to do better that that not happen again and help us to get along. Help us to make heaven our home. We've got a home and we've got a body waiting on us. Let not your heart be troubled. That'll help your heart not be troubled right there. We're making bank payments on houses. A lot of people are, and they're trying to get them, get them where they need them. And then we're going to die, and we're going to leave it. Worked 30 years to pay for one. Well, I went through a divorce. Husband got it. Wife got it. Or it burnt down, and we're building another. And we're trying. You know what? Work another 20 years. Well, I'd like to retire, but I'm 75, and I still ain't got my house paid for and it's all going to be left behind. It's going to be left behind. It's good to enjoy all the fruits of your labor while you're here. God give you a three, four, five-story house or mansion. You enjoy that. If God seen fit for you to have it, you should enjoy it. Don't, don't laugh at somebody else that don't have one. Don't mean to be somebody else that don't. But be good to everybody and enjoy it because God gave it to you. Because Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So you didn't get that on your own. You know, the people that's really wicked, Doug, it's got a lot of money. God helped them be where they are. They just don't realize where they're at. If they would turn and repent for their sins, they could have a good life. As Doug said a while ago, when they leave here, somebody else is going to get that. If you've got a four-car garage and three Cadillacs and two Mercedes sitting out there and you die, it's going to be left for somebody else. 
And if you leave a will, then they hopefully they'll get it and all that. But where are you? Is it well with your soul? If you should die today, is it well with your soul? That's the question you need to ask. Is it well today? This is serious. All of us Christians that's, that's trying to do right, the devil's trying to stop us to keep us from being here because when somebody does come in that needs us, we're not here. And then they're discouraged, and then they'll leave. And he's won. Let not your heart be troubled, Doug. Daddy, let not your, all of it. Let not your heart be troubled, Tammy. Because when somebody comes in and needs to be saved, Brother Kenny, we might have a word of encouragement for them. They might see something in our life. Say, them people sure happy. They don't have a big fancy church. They don't have a big fancy this. They don't have fancy that. But they sure are happy. Something different about them people. Are. Why are they so happy, Brother Ken? Why are they happy? Because they got one thing that other people don't have. It's Jesus. You get Jesus, you can wear a smile on your face in the midst of the storm. It ain't always easy. But it wasn't easy for them men to go down and break through and get David that water either. They might have made it look easy, but they, was, they could have looked at that and seen the fear. And so there's a lot of people down there with spears and swords. Sometimes it ain't easy, but God is the help. When Gideon went out to face all them thousands of people with only 300, God fought the battle. Gideon didn't even fight the battle, Doug. They drew swords against herself. They said the sword of the Lord and the sword of Gideon. And then and, and they turned their swords, started to fight against herself, and they wiped herself out because God fought for them. There's places you'll find that God went in and drove people out with hornets and things. He, for, for Joshua and them, he drove them out with hornets. Joshua, I'm talking about God to do things for you that you just can't do. I remember a time, and it will get into the middle of it, but Doug, when we was growing up, when Dad had that wreck, broke his arm, and Mom could test it. When the bank wanted to come take the house, and the man wanted to get it, God made a way, and the bank payment got made. And thank God for those good folks that helped make that, but you know what? They had to listen to God. They had to obey God. If they said, I ain't going to do that, guess what? God still made a way. He just made it some other way. He had just made another way. So God tells you to do something, best thing to do, just say, okay, Lord, I'm going to do my best. But let not your heart be troubled. The devil's going to show you all your bad problems. He's going to show you why you can't do this, why you can't go here, why you shouldn't do this, why you can't afford this, why you can't play this song, why you can't sing this, why you can't do this because you don't do it like somebody else or you don't do it the way somebody else wanted you to do it. It don't matter. Just obey God. Don't let your heart get you down. That's the devil trying to, trying to pull you down. Trying to pull you down. But at the end of the day, when this life's over, I'm telling you something. If we're not standing here when Jesus steps out, we're leaving one way or the other. Doug said it while well, go one way or the other. We are leaving here. We are leaving here. One way or the other. We are leaving here. Do you got Jesus? If you got Jesus, you can lift your head up. You can hold your head up. I don't claim to be no great preacher, but I want to deliver my hand. That's what God laid on my heart, and I want people to be encouraged today. You can look up, and because you are blessed. You got Jesus, you're blessed. I come in this church a lot of days. Sometimes we see a lot. Sometimes we see a few. It don't, that don't make my salvation tilt or none bit whatsoever because I still know who came with me over here, Brother Kenny. He still came. He still came today. And like Daddy said, if he's only one, he'll come and, and touch one. But I believe if we'll hold on and we'll be encouraged that God will encourage other people. I love it here. It's home to me. Brother Ken, it's home to me. Hey, Amen. It's not, I not just love the building. I just love the people. love God. And the, the building can be burned down tomorrow and we couldn't do nothing about it. We didn't have to build nothing. But you know what? We build nothing and we still have God. We still have God. You got to have God. 
If you got God, the other stuff don't really, it, it's just extra. It's just all extra things. But you got to have God. It's like building the foundation for a house. You got to have a foundation. He's the foundation. He's what we build on. And we're going home one day, Mom. We're going home. I'm glad to know I'm saved. If I didn't know I was saved, Doug, I'd get in that altar right now. I'd get in my face in that altar and I'd say, Lord, help me to know I'm saved. I want this feeling that I know that I know I'm saved. That my heart don't have to be troubled. Oh, I'll go home today and I'll see things that bothers me and troubles me, but my mind will go back to that verse that God stuck in my head. Don't let your heart be troubled. Get through today. Like the Lord gave me a message years ago. Don't fall today under tomorrow's load. You worry about tomorrow's load tomorrow. You just get through today, and I'll walk with you tomorrow. If you need me to be there tomorrow, and then the next day, and the next day, I'll always be there. But you just take care of today. Just take care of today. If you just take care of today and not look so far out to tomorrow, you won't be holding such a heavy load. You're just carrying today's load. You ever want to pack up for a week, take a week's vacation? You have to load the truck plumb up. You just go on a little one-day picnic, you throw a little bit in there. Don't break the car down. You load up for a month's vacation, you're really going to have to load the car down and carry it around. But you get you enough stuff to do you today. And just carry it today. Tomorrow, you can carry tomorrow's tomorrow. But today's the day of salvation. May not be here tomorrow to worry about that load. You fail today over something you ain't even going to be dealing with tomorrow. I hope people's here tomorrow. But Jesus is a today, right now God. Some people say, well, I'm going to get right, Doug. Maybe when I retire, I'm all, I might start going to church, or I might get right with God. I might get right once, once my family starts coming in, then I'll go in. Maybe if my wife would go, well, then I will go. Maybe if my brother would go with me, I will go. No, you need to go for you. If God calls for you, it won't help you none. If, whoever's there, be encouraged today. You don't have to hinge. I, you know what I love most about salvation, Doug, and Jesus? One of the greatest things. There's a million things I love, but I, I'll single a couple out. I love that it don't depend on if you love me, if Daddy loves me, if Mom loves me, if my brother loves me, if Tammy loves me. It just matters if Jesus loves me. I like that it's a me and God relationship. It's a me and God. If you decide you don't want to go no more, God will still go with me. He'll still say, come on, I'll go with you. If you can't get a hold of mom and dad to go somewhere, brother and sister, and you say, God, I, I, I'm just all alone. I need you to help me. I guarantee you try him and see if he won't go with you. He'll walk right with you. He'll hold your hand. He will talk to you. He'll stick what, Doug? Closer than a brother. Closer than a brother. A good brother will go right with you, buddy, because they love you. A good brother that loves you, he'll go with you. But the Lord will go further. He's closer. And if it comes your time to leave this world and they call in a preacher or a doctor or a priest or whoever to come in to talk to you to see if you're all right, your brother can't go no farther. Your mom and daddy, they may already be gone or, or they may be by your bedside. You may not be 75, 80, 95. You might not be 105-year-old because everybody don't make it to 105-year-old before they're in that place. When we're, I'm 45, I might be there next week. I might be there tonight. Some people look at, well, I'll, I'll get right when I start feeling a little bad. Or when I do this or when I do that. The Bible said today is a day of salvation. If you hear his voice, harden not your heart. In other words, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it get hard. Don't let all the things that reason with life. You know, the first time when the Lord starts dealing with you because he did me, the first thing he starts giving me all the reasons why I shouldn't do it. If the Lord's dealing with somebody today to pray, that's when you just go ahead and do it. If you wait and you tarry too long, he will talk you out of it. And... You ain't got no promise that he's coming again to deal with you. The Bible said the Spirit of the Lord won't always strive with man. So it said over in Genesis before the flood came, he won't always be there. And if he's striving with your heart, today's a day. I ain't saying he won't come back for six months straight. But there ain't no guarantee that he will. I believe he's merciful. I like to think he would. I think he did me for a long time. 
But I also know I found myself face down in a floor with a gun stuck over my head, Doug. And had he called me home then, where would I have been? Where would I have been then? I know where I'd been because I was begging him and I knew where I was going. My pride got swallowed real fast. Real fast your pride gets swallowed when you're facing hell wide open. I was taught about hell. I was taught about heaven. Some people may ain't been taught it like I was, but I knew. God knew that I knew, and he held me accountable. But we know where we're going. I'm glad I know where I'm going now. I'm glad I know where I'm going now because I made a choice, Brother Kenny. I made a choice. Tammy, I made a good choice. I believe as Murray and Martha Doug, they was talking to Jesus, and he said she's chosen the good part, and it won't be taken away from her. I'm glad it won't be taken away, Doug. I'm glad it won't be taken away, Amy. It won't be taken away. If you got a hold of it, you don't got to give this up. You don't got to give it up for, for sickness. You don't got to give it up for financial. The bank might come and take everything you got, but they can't take what you got in your heart. And you know what David said? I love what David said in one place. He said, I've been young. And now I'm old, hallelujah. And he said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He said, I was young once, and now I'm old. And he's seen a lot of things. He said, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken. That's, a, that's something to hold your hat on right there. I've never seen them forsaken. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Any man that holds God and holds to God, he said, I've never seen God forsake a one of them. Ain't that, that's a good promise, ain't it? David said, I was young. I was a young man, Doug, when I went down there and slew that giant. He didn't let me die down there. And then as I got older, I seen things happening, and I held to God even when I failed God, and I, and I asked the Lord to cleanse me and create within me a clean heart, renew within me a right spirit. He was right there again. As I go, on, never seen him forsake the righteous. Never. That's a, that's a winning record. Never seen him. I love that verse. One of my favorite verses as I read the Bible that encourages me up. As I say, well, Lord, as I get older, I know you won't. If I'll just stick to you, I'll make my mistakes. But if I'll turn to you, as he told Israel, I'll love, if you just turn from your ways and call on me, I'll be there. All these people that needs God, if they just turn, Mom, and say, Lord, I failed you. I made a mistake. I, I, I admit it. Yeah. Pride's of taking people down the wrong road. They've got this big reputation they build up with their family, with their friends, with their communities, and it's hard to get down humble. It's hard to say, you know what, I've been wrong all these years. The Mr. Tough Guy attitude, and it's got to fall. You've got to become humble like a little child. Got to come humble like a little child. You know how many times my, my flesh like to rear up, Doug, when something really bad happens? That old man says, you know what I do? I done what I do. I done what I did back in. God said, do you not remember who you are? Just take it. Do you not know who you are? You don't matter what spirit you're from, who you are. You don't do that. You pray for them. Well, it's hard. So it's, oh, it's easy being a Christian. No, sometimes you've got to check yourself. But you know what? When you do, if you'll humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, God will take care of it. God will take care of it for you. It's just people's going to laugh at you. They're going to say, yeah, back then you would have done this. That. What are you doing now, little Christian boy? Call me anything you want. Call me a Jesus lover. Call me anything you want because God's going to fight my battles. And I'll tell you something. If you're fighting against one of God's and God's fighting the battle, you've done lost. You might feel like you're winning. You might be pulling a good one over on them, and you all might be gathered up in the corner, look what we've done to so-and-so. But let me tell you something. When God gets after you, your ticket will be punched. You can laugh at them. You can paw, You can. I can show you through the Bible where God's people got, got this and that and other, and I don't got time. I ain't going to stand up here all day to do it. But when God comes after people, it never ends well for them people. It never ends well. And God will fight for his people. You go back to that Old Testament, look what Moses and them did, and Joshua and them did, and Gideon and them did, and, 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 and Elijah did, and Elisha did. When he said, go out, old man of God, to, he said, the king said, you come down. He sent 50, and his captain of his 50, and he went out to get him, and he said, the king said, you come down. He said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down and consume this 50. 
And fire from, from God come down and burned up that 50. And he sent another 50. And his captain and his 50. He said, the old man of God, he said, the Lord said, uh, the, the captain said, come down, come down quickly. You get down here now. You get down here now. I'm the king and I'm over all this. And you come down now and you come down quickly. He said, Lord, if I be a man of God, he just set up our own thing. He said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven, consume him like it did the former 50, consume this 50 and his captain, his 50. And here come the fire down, burn them up. King got him another 50. He said, go out there and say to get him. And I said, come down here. And he went out to get him, and he said, he said, oh, king, he, he said, oh, oh, I think it was Elijah. He said, uh, just, just a speed. let my life be merciful in thy sight. Let my life be merciful in my sight. He said, don't let me be burned. The other 50s, they were, they were burned up. Don't let me be burned up. And the Lord said, go on down there with him. Because he humbled himself. The big mighty don't always get it with God. You threaten God, you got to watch when you make your threats. You know what the Bible said in two different places? I know. He said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Jeroboam, I believe it was, dug stretched forth his man, arm out toward the man at the altars in the book of Kings, about the 13th chapter, and his arm withered up. And he couldn't even draw it into himself no more. He couldn't even pull it to him because the man of God was prophesying, and he put forth his hand on him, and his hand is root. He couldn't get it. He said, pray for me. Pray for me. My hand, let my hand be restored. And the man of God prayed for him, and his hand went back to normal. Careful when you, hallelujah, put your hand on one of God's people. You be real careful when you put your hand on one of God's people. You better know what you're doing when you put your hand on one of God's people. Maybe 50 of you come to get one. Maybe 50 gathered up laughing at one. But them 50 got burned up in the Bible. I, I don't know why, but God knows. God's people are peculiar people. And God's people, God has set aside. He said, these are my people. These are my people. They hear my voice and they follow me. Don't touch them. He said, don't touch them. And you know what he told us? Don't let your heart be troubled about them 50 that's coming to get you. Them 50 that says, get down, do it my way. You're going to do it my way. God said, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled because you're mine. You're mine. I believe that today. I believe that I'm his and he's mine. Yeah. Brother Kenny, I believe that I'm a child of the king, yeah. the real king. I'm not, I wasn't born in the wealth or riches in this life, but when I got born again, Doug, as he said in Romans, we cry, I have a father. I become adopted into that family of God. And I'm an heir and a joint heir with Christ. That's wonderful, ain't it? That's wonderful. I don't want to talk too much. Maybe when y'all come on preach, Daddy preach, Doug, you want to preach a while. Come on. I wish we all would come on preach. I don't want to get ahead of people. Come on and preach. If, if, if they don't want to preach, we'll, we'll open the altar. Maybe Tammy would sing, play. I'm glad to be here. I praise God for the blessing I felt just sitting right over there. Without God, we don't have anything today. I, I, you know, some people said, I wouldn't beg nobody to do nothing, but I beg people today, Daddy, to come. I'd beg you to come. I'd beg you to fall down wherever you are and just... Just say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Lord, help me. You may not want to be like Brother Rick. Brother Rick, you don't want to be like me. I'm just, I feel like I make mistakes, and I, stay, I feel like I stand at the head of the list a lot of days. But I'd like you to have what I feel. I'd like you to have what I feel. It's real. I can't show it to you with that natural eye, but you can feel that when you get around God's people. You can just feel that about them. I'd ask you today, don't let your heart be troubled. If you got a heavy burden, call on the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord. You know, the Lord is good. The Lord's really good, Mom. He's really good. He's been good to me. I look around, I think he's been good to all of us. The Lord is good. I believe we can all say the Lord is good. I believe you can take a poll among all God's Christian people truly love him Doug and they would say the Lord is good I don't believe as many of them could say that I've never faced a trial or that I've never had something go wrong but they would all admit God is good they'd admit that the peace of God the peace of God is good it's good when you can lay your head down on your pillow at night and say Lord if it's, 
If this is my last night on this earth, it's well with my soul. I've been to many funerals. I was in funerals before I got saved. I'd, I'd see them corpse or whatever you want to call it, bodies, people. And I'd sit there and say, Lord, I, I don't know where they went, but I don't feel ready. And then I went to funerals after I got saved. And I've heard the Lord speak to me as the families was crying, Daddy. Remember a funeral one time, and the families was really, really tore up. And I said, Lord, give me something, something to say, something to say. I'm afraid to say the wrong thing. And the Lord said, Son, this is why I had to die. There's no sense in all that crying. They're in a better place. They can be in a better place. You don't have to cry. You can be sure today. You can be sure today that you don't have to cry. You can be sure today that if God calls you, you can be sure. This ain't a guesswork. There's no guesswork in this. You can be sure. When you feel that presence of God get down in your heart, oh, you can be sure. While they play, maybe somebody like this, maybe somebody like to pray. Oh